Hey guys, it's me, Slave to the Games, and I'm back with another, yet again, Bloodlines 2 slash World of Darkness video. This time we're going to be going over three things, not just one, like the Alice stores, but we also had another video that day. But anyways, as always, thank you guys for stopping by. I hope you learned something new, and thank you guys for choosing to hang out with me. The first subject we're going to be covering is the Laban. The Laban were, during the Dark Ages, viewed as a single bloodline by European vampires. The vampires of Africa nearly all referred to themselves as Laban, and certainly seemed distinct from regular clans. In all actuality, the term Laban is the name African kindred give to themselves. The Laban which the European kindred knew were actually just one of the many legacies of African kindred. Unlike the Asian Kui Jin, Laban are not a separate supernatural race, but the Laban are in many ways quite different from regular kindred. They ascribe their origins to African gods and legends, unlike the kindred's noddest version. However, there are distinct similarities. The Laban Kang is strikingly similar to the kindred Kane. Also being resident in Africa, which the Laban call the Ebony Kingdom, does not make you Laban. Laban have a distinctly different worldview forged by centuries of contact with the culture and supernatural of Africa. For example, although there are a few venture in Africa, they are considered outsiders. However, the Mala Watu, the African Cappadocians, although feared for their power over the dead, are considered part of the Laban because of their long history in Africa. Contrary to the kindred, no Laban follows the path of humanity, nor any other path of enlightenment for that matter. Instead, Laban forged their lives around two separate paths of morality, I, which is their morality towards humankind, and Orin, which is their morality towards the supernatural. Depending on where they stand on these two scales, their appearance and supernatural power fluctuates. This fundamental difference forever separates the Laban from the typical Cainite. And this brings us to our next one, which is Nodism. Nodism is the study of lore pertaining to Cain and Enna. Nodism takes at least two paths in the Sabbat, Nodism invariably refers to the path of Cain, a path of enlightenment devoted to emulating the mythical Cain. As a Gehenna cult writ large, the Sabbat used Nodism as a theological cornerstone complete with a recognized heretical cult, the path of Lilith. Nodists provide the intellectual reason for the Sabbat as an agency for Cain to work his will in the final nights. Also, followers of the road of heaven are frequently referred to as Nodists, but also as the faithful. Outside of the Sabbat, there are a variety of secular Nodist scholars even among the Camarilla, although it's not a widely popular practice. Secular Nautists may accept part or all of the Cain myth, but do not attach the same eschatological significance that the Sabbat do. Modern Nautist scholars are likely to be influenced by scholarly trends among the kind and interpret Nautist material in a more worldly sense. Beckett is famous for arguing that the Cain and Abel story is a metaphor for agrarian and hunter-gatherer communities and conflict. Nautists spend a lot of time hunting down source material. The most famous Nautist source is the Book of Nod, which details Cain's wanderings after killing Abel. The book is not one single volume, but a collection of different fragmentary texts which are assembled under one narrative. Nautists also seek out archaeological information on early vampiric civilization, but generally do not focus their study on much after the fall of the second city when conventional, that is kind, history provides an overarching narrative. And now finally we move on to the last thing, which is a thaumaturgy. Thaumaturgy uses a system of paths and rituals to focus the thaumaturge's will. Paths are learned expressions of thaumaturgical principles developed into reliable, repeatable effects. Unlike the natural powers of disciplines, however, thaumaturges must concentrate their will, forcing the power of their blood to unnatural ends. If their concentration is not complete, if they falter, then the magic will fail, and in extreme cases such failure can have a lasting effect on the thaumaturge, draining their mental resources. It's not always so, however. Before the final nights, paths were less difficult to use and did not carry the possibility of harm to the thaumaturge. Rituals, by contrast, are elaborate, sophisticated, and codified instructions for producing set magic effects. Rituals vary in complexity and require varying levels of thaumaturgical knowledge to complete successfully. They often require the trappings of hermetic magic, circles drawn in chalk, locks of the victim's hair, meditation, chanting ancient words of power, and the like. They can be incredibly powerful, particularly when senior thaumaturges joined forces. It was a thaumaturgical ritual that cursed the entire Asamite clan. Among the Camarilla, all practitioners of blood magic are sometimes lumped together as a generic thaumaturgist. While other traditions chafe at this misnomer, it shows the long-lasting effect of the Tremere on blood magic in general, since they have worked hard to incorporate most forms of pre-existing blood magic into their hermetic system. Adept thaumaturgists have sometimes been diagnosed with thaumaturgical glossolalia, a mental derangement that stems from overexpenditure and heavy reliance on thaumaturgy. Afflicted persons under stress speak only in thaumaturgical symbology, but often the mind of the individual seems to shift into a different state of thought, almost like magical aphasia. 
The afflicted rarely has any idea they are doing anything unusual and sometimes become unable to translate more mundane language. Thaumaturgy has a large number of paths, though it is not the oldest tradition of blood magic. The Tremere were magical scholars long before they were vampires and toil ceaselessly to push their studies even further. Any paths were once known by names which reflected the Tremere's previous magical heritage as well. And that's where I'm going to be leaving this video for today guys. As always, like I said, I hope you learned something new and enjoyed the video. Thank you guys for stopping by and hanging out with me. If you did enjoy Enjoy the video don't forget to leave a like and subscribe think about also optionally joining my patreon and check out my merch store to help further support me and what i do as of well every single time i say it, it is completely optional you don't have to do it but it does give me a confidence boost and help me get the things i need to keep well everything going great getting new games and upgrading what i need to to make everything look better but nonetheless even if you're just leaving a like and commenting sharing your ideas sharing what you think of each video etc i very much appreciate that and i enjoy seeing what you guys think of the upcoming bloodlines too as well as what you think of the world of darkness even if i myself don't play the ttrpg it's still exciting to see how much you guys actually care about this world as always it's been fun and i'll catch you guys in the next video release you guys enjoy your day